the Hadley Cl Climate Change Committee, March 14th, 2024 meeting. Can I just sit back here and heckle you guys? Or <laughs> <laughs> and calling it to order, 7 o'clock. <clears throat> so our guest speaker, I want to say Tom Waskiewicz. That's but, not, but that's not Was right. Was it's Tom Waskiewicz. Waskiewicz, okay. It was going to be our guest speaker, but he's got pink eye and couldn't come. So he sent us this. Jack, why don't you sure, read I'll, it? Sure, I'll start in for Tom. And um, I've known Tom since I was much younger. Uh, Tom is an assistant professor of management at Elms College. And uh, Tom is asking his students in one of his MBA courses to take a look at our committee and to see what suggestions they can offer. So he's looking at sustainability and economic impact. This team will focus on the intersection of sustainability practices and economic outcomes. It will analyze how Hadley's environmental efforts affect the town's bottom line and marketing position. That's sort of an interesting approach. Um, it will also investigate how sustainability practices can drive innovation and competitive advantage in the market. So really looking at um, what economic impacts we can have. Hello. Hi. Um, the, uh, the master's students, the MBA students, will also look at corporate responsibility or corporate social responsibility and economic impact. And the team will examine the economic implications of CSR initiatives on Hadley's performance in the broader economy. It will assess Hadley's CSR and the Hadley Climate Change Committee's efforts to impact the bottom line and societal welfare. And lastly, his students will be looking at the technology and economic transformation. So this team will explore how recent technological ad uh, advancements like artificial intelligence, blockchain, renewable energy, influence various sectors of the economy pertaining to the climate change committee statement. It will investigate these technologies to gain an understanding of the economic ramifications. So really what Tom is proposing is taking a look at the work of this committee from the economic side could be interesting uh, and I hope that it can happen um, I make a motion that we approve his request that the MBA students take a look at the work we're doing right so we won't have to do anything they're just going to observe us. they will do the work but so on that motion we'll need second second okay all in favor Aye. 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 All right, it approved unanimously. Nice. Can I have a mm -hmm. copy of that? Absolutely. You, you have it. it in your yep. file there. So the meeting already started? Yeah. No. Yeah. It has mission so that's this. this. That's, that's, the oh. that's the bottom one. So it looks like this, the mission yeah. statement. Yeah. This is the one from Tom and the folks at Elms College. Oh, OK. There you go. Um, do you want me to include this in the minutes? We mm -hmm. have to. Any document we use. Okay, so will you send me it? Um, I will. Uh, okay, good. Thank you. Can I put it as an attachment? Yeah. And you will send that forward? Yes. Excellent. Okay, so the February minutes, did everybody have a look? Mm -hmm. Everything okay with those minutes? Yes. Yes. I have a motion to approve. Second, the motion. I don't think I can do the motion. I'm no. just asking. Make a motion. Okay. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So updates, Jack. Farmers Roundtable. So Farmers Roundtable. I expect that either tomorrow or Saturday you will see an article in the Daily Hampshire Gazette about the Farmers Roundtable. Um, I believe you were all sent pictures of mm -hmm. what it looks like. It's just not the same in black and white, but it still, it still looks nice. good and was actually a very, you know, I thought of you, Catalina, with the butternut squash and the asparagus. So the language reads, co-sponsored by the Hadley Climate Change Committee and Plainville Farm. It's a farmer's round table on March 22nd. So not tomorrow, but next week for anyone who can make it 
please join. And Plainville Farm is right next to where I live. It's one three house over. Three o'clock. So mm -hmm. three o'clock. Yep. Uh, we are hosting a public meeting for local farmers and farm workers to share ideas on how to deal with climate change and its impact on our crops. Each growing season is getting warmer and the rains are becoming more erratic and intense. Should we concentrate on better irrigation or better drainage? How do we keep diseases from destroying our crops? How can we protect our employees while they work in the heat? How can we adapt to changing frost events and rising summer heat waves? If you have any answers to these questions or more questions, please join us and help us move forward as growers. There will be reps from the FSA and the NRCS to offer ideas, and we hope to have people available to talk about crop insurance. And Wally said the other day he was confident that he would get somebody to do that. And Julie Fine from American Farmland Trust okay. will be coming. Okay. And she also did the dairy roundtable, and we'll, maybe we're going to be hearing more about that later. Right. I, we'll do that under items not anticipated at the time of this posting. And CISA is going to be there soon? It's been a struggle with CISA, and it's sort of interesting. I thought they'd be leading the way, but um, Wally will keep trying. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and if it, uh, you as a, uh, as a representative of the committee call them and say it's very important that you will be there. Oh, oh he's done all that. He's yeah. Well, like yeah, crazy. I will, I'll try to be there. Also, I want to let you know that just for the sake of sort of due diligence, I am going to post this. Uh, and Where I'll send this to Jessica Spanknable as part of one of our extra events. I don't, where, I don't think she's the person, but where do you think she's going to put on the calendar? Yeah. Okay. And also, and this is interesting, and I don't know if the computer's working. Yes. It is posted on the Hadley web, uh, on the Had Town of Hadley website, which... It also came up on the town website. Yeah. I don't know if we can call up the town website. Yeah. We'll see. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I can do if my I got phone. this thing uh, you want me to online, it's not connected. Um, Let me try here with my cell phone. What was the pass? Anybody know how we get on the internet here? HSC guest, if you go to the top. If every, get everybody can look at it on their phone. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Just go to town of Hadley. Yeah. How many people do you think we can expect at this thing? No idea, but it is going to be cooler than it was today. You know, so I right. think some people will be interested. If you try that Hadley website, and it was posted on March 11th. Oh, there it is. If you go down, go down below Route 9 and click go on. Go up a little go bit. Go up a little bit. Yeah. Go. Farmers round table, there it is. Nice. And this is pretty impressive. And it's great for us to be doing this conversation. This, this is really so important for us to keep yes. doing it. I've been putting up the word the best I can. I put it on Facebook, send it to the Mother's Club. Hadley Learned. Oh, I did that with Shredding right. Day, actually. Right. I sent it to Hadley oh, Learned. Oh, Shredding Day. I, like, I, I saw it several times. Like that. Yeah. Different Different for yeah. The Hadley Community Five page. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and also, um, I sent it over to Bruce Jinx because he has a very, uh, he's the fellow who owns Maple Land Farm. I, he does scoops. Oh, so you share so the he, round table. Yeah. he has, I think, thousands of people on his Facebook page. Oh, wow. Um, well, maybe he'll come. Oh, I hope he does. All farmers are welcome. I know it's silly, but are you going to be serving anything like drinks or food? Could we, just a could little we bring everybody like cookies or something? Yeah. Like we well, if you like expect it to go on for a few hours, we probably should a few have hours. some kind of 
Oh. I don't know if it's going to be a few hours, but I expect it'll go on for a while. You're welcome to try. I'm I'm like finishing my school day and running yeah. across the yeah, field yeah, yeah. to get there. Yeah. No, but did Wally say anything about having food there? Or? No, but he's not always the best about it. Yeah. 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 So, so, what's that? I bet American Farmer trusts for that. I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Julie um, Duke from AFT could come up with something. Sh should we reach out to her? Do you want me to? Yeah. Just because I think it will be, it would yeah. be nice. very yeah. hospitable. Yeah. Do you yeah. know her? No. So you, Julie Fine? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do it with my I, I could. Yeah, sure. All right. And, and thanks for showing. Do you see me it? Because yeah. if, I, if there's any way yeah. I can help, I would. I, I, yeah. Because now I think so I can pick up cider or. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a budget? Is there like a money anywhere for this? Okay. So Who are you going to donation? Do um, but I yeah, and there you go. I, I'm just sending myself an email okay. so I do it. Okay. Yeah. Big wife would be good one to ask for donation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big wife because they have a farm here in Hadley. Yeah. Well, and many suppliers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Big one has a farm in Hadley? No. Are you sure? Well, they, they buy right. from right. local oh, farmers. Okay. Okay. He actually has a sign saying he's a big wine supplier. Yeah. Right, yeah. but it's a big no, I, 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 it's yeah, yeah, I have right, seen these big wine trucks farm. going into <laughs> <laughs> in farms. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So what are you trying to do? I'm not trying to do anything. Okay, because you're up. So but it's we're done talking about the right yeah. 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 you need yeah. to, If you need to swing back or okay. something. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So should I give you a little seizure? Oh, of course. Yes. Okay. 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 And get this. Sure. Right. Okay. Uh, this is all very fine. Very fickle. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So at the meeting that Michael and Jack and I attended, select board meeting, it's been about six weeks ago now, I think, where they there had somebody from Sunbug and um, Jonathan Perot were there to um, give advice, would you say, mm -hmm. about the idea of us having solar on the landfill. So anyway, at what one thing that came out of that meeting was the select board made it pretty clear to us that they want us to to recommend to them what we should do next regarding the landfill so we said at the meeting michael did it like yeah we'll we'll work with them but i, I checked with carolyn and she's like man the select board needs you guys need to vote you need to come up with a recommendation vote on it get on the agenda for the select board which you're now on for march 20th um and present it so that's what michael has done you guys all have a copy of what he wrote up and then just i guess today um the guy what's his name nick uh, yeah, from nick. sunbug had made this mm. diagram i guess you call it mm. of, this is what what is it, two megawatts yes. of solar on that area? Which, like that. Which is Which just tremendous. This is, this. I think, mm -hmm. very helpful to see a picture like yeah, that. Yeah, it doesn't do justice in the black and white, but whatever. But anyway, um, yeah, it still oh, gives you some, there. like this is, right here is the transfer station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And presumably um, we could utilize some of this space for battery storage, which mm -hmm. is going to be required. Um, oh, okay. Or even here, it, because of this scaleless budget, in order to access the incentives that, that um, the state offers through the smart program, we would need to have storage, and that's something that's really important for the grid, um, because we can't have all this intermittent alternative energy, wind and solar, and. There has well, to be a way to store it. There needs something. to be a way to store it. Um, so um, the next step in this process has 
finally gotten a little bit clearer to me. Um, and that is uh, to determine the grid's capacity for a system of this size. Now it turns out there are already a number of large scale solar installations in Hadley and the capacity based on a few installers that I've talked to is cursory review. The reviews indicate that the capacity is lacking currently wow. on the grid to accommodate something that, like this without a substation improvement, mm -hmm. which is time consuming. Um, and, and so to determine whether there is capacity and to determine if there is not capacity, what is necessary to enable such That's like the very the first step. Yes. We need to file a pre-application with Eversource. Mm -hmm. And um, it's basically a rough proposal of a two megawatt system in this location. And then they get their engineers and they study it. It costs a couple hundred, three, four hundred dollars to Eversource for that application process and a couple hundred dollars more to pay somebody who knows how to do that. Um, and so that's what we would be suggesting to the select board that they initiate that process. Um, so, um, and, and I, so I, I can read this motion that, that I've drafted here and we can edit it or change it or whatever. But that's One thing I was thinking, yeah, yeah. so you came up with this not from your own research, but also from talking to Nick, right? Absolutely. So I would kind of conclude that to sort of, okay, you know, how who's Nick? Nick De, De Arbolith. I'm not pronouncing his last name right. He's from Sunbug. He's from Sunbug. He was brought on by the in by the town along with John Perot, John Perot yeah. to assess out what this town's. Uh, solar um, possibilities might be. Uh, I have a concern. Yeah. Um, that space next to the river with the possibility mm -hmm. of flooding yeah. that we were talking about, that yeah. big possibility of flooding is kind of what we have to say. Well, well that's part of the what will happen, yeah. right? The landfill is higher than most of the land in Hadley. So if those panels flood on the top of that landfill, everybody else has got a snorkel on at that point in town. <laughs> um, so all that is ele elevated. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so all of this is pitched. It's mm -hmm. very much a gigantic hill. So even if it might flood around it, but it won't. Yeah. Oh, it is yeah. a valid concern if we put battery storage mm -hmm. in those flat areas, mm -hmm. and they will have to be elevated too mm -hmm. to protect them from, yeah. from, from flooding. And on that point, these panels will all be raised. Mm -hmm. So it's not just ground level, but they'll be elevated even higher. Yeah, it's something that we should keep in, in, in in mind yeah. because we know we know that that can happen you know oh yeah that's what we have been talking about that it yeah. can have perfectly happen yep. something like that and yep. all this investment and everything without thinking about this yeah yep. it's a fair point there is um you know money in the operating budget for this to ensure the whole thing too mm -hmm. in the event that mm -hmm. you know something catastrophic did happen such as a flood or something else mm -hmm. that we can't even foresee. Yeah. Um, so, um, and, and before I read this, I, well, no, it's another topic that I would like to address at. So, um, other, so you want to put some way to resolve the Climate History Committee? So you want to put something in here? I just think when you enter, when I, I, well, first of all, I think, I mean, we will go to the select board meeting with you, but this is kind of your baby, so I think well, you should be the one to stand up and, s okay. you know. So how about if I insert the Hadley hereby recommends, in accordance with the recommendations presented by Sunbug um, mm -hmm. yeah. at yeah. the town committee meeting on such and such day, right. that. Uh, perfect. <coughs> Uh, 
And what is that two megawatts? Like, wh what is, how, like, how much that, uh, does it, does it, like, what uh, supply will be, like, a one month <coughs> for all the town of Hadley, or, you know, like, well, just... Well, that, that's a great question. Right. I'll tell you, we have a, a fairly large solar array on our house, and it's five kilowatts. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, this is forty times mm -hmm. what we have on our house. Mm -hmm. Just to give some perspective, forty four thousand times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm doing some math here. We're so five kilowatts. It's yes, in mind to power yeah. all the town buildings and probably have some left over. That's and what I want. And like more. Like, 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 so when we start talk about that, it, we need to have a. a and a, a simile, a, 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 like people is like two mayor, but wow. it's something oh, no, that. I've been working on this. You yeah. yeah. some of the meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, oh. she, I don't think <coughs> you probably didn't see the chart with all the numbers. And no. What's the question, sir? Like, uh, uh, um, so is like, is it possible to, to say that, that 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 two megawatts will be something that will, you were saying, like, Give the electricity for all the town of Hadley for no, not the whole town for the yeah. municipal buildings. Okay. Okay. This when I originally ran the numbers, the first set of numbers, which you guys have all seen, yeah. it was about a one and a one to one and a quarter megawatt, one and a half megawatt facility, I believe, which was based on the demand of all the municipal buildings, mm -hmm. including the pumps, schools, right? sewage, everything else in the town of mm Hadley. -hmm. Subsequently, in conversations with Nick from mm -hmm. Sunbug, he strongly recommended that we just do what the capacity of that area of mm -hmm. the landfill right. is and cover it because it makes sense Future. for economic okay. Absolutely. And all the and town's going the town has 54 electric vehicles mm -hmm. that stunned me i mm -hmm. happened to mm -hmm. stumble upon that information a few weeks ago mm -hmm. um through one of the assessors i think he had been uh -huh. talking about that i never realized i didn't know we had that many Resi well, that's residents you mean residentially owned privately owned or more mm -hmm. town. town he was saying town. town and that's why it's like wow i, I didn't even them. know we had that many we didn't even have that many vehicles too. no we had 54 Maybe he means 54 in town. I, I imagine. Okay, that maybe 54 in town. Because all we have is like, I mean, the yeah. police have. Okay, many. that makes more that sense. Makes more yes, sense. okay, because it's like, yeah. where? Where are they hiding? Yeah, and let me f finish here in terms yeah. of, 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 so this would be a amount of electricity in excess of the town's needs. Mm -hmm. And the SMART program, which are the incentives that the state of Massachusetts has for solar, um, has a, has a number of programs that gives you a, a little bit more for every a few more pennies more for every watt that you generate, based on whether you're owned by a municipality, based on gives you a couple pennies, mm -hmm. based on whether you're sited on a landfill or a brownfield, a couple more pennies, and then it, there there are also incentives for a low income end user. So if we had an end user that was maybe a low-income units in, in town or something yeah. like that we could send some of the electricity over onto their bill qualify for a greater uh, a, a, a greater incentive for, mm -hmm. for the project as well um, so it is complicated in terms of how you actually allocate all of this electricity and I will get up to speed on that mm -hmm. as <laughs> it's going right. to take years. But for there are steps to but it. But there are steps to that process. So first of all, I want to applaud you for following up on this. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. it, Thank you. I dream of the day when something like this can happen yeah. because this is just tremendous if Hadley can mine the energy from the sun mm -hmm. and spread it around. Yeah. Does anybody or know or can they ascertain from their calendars what the date was? that the Sunbug representative, Nick, came to the select board. Hold on. Things messy, but <laughs> I think I took notes then. Yeah, I did too, actually. So on the landfill. Uh, oh, wow. That was actually 117. Oh, OK. Yeah. Hmm, I don't think I did take notes. Yeah, that's what did you? That was the first time yeah. it was Chase and Nick. Okay, 
So the Hadley Climate Committee hereby recommends that the town select board in accordance hereby recommends sorry. Yeah, 2024. Okay. That the town select board, that, that the Hadley select board or its designated representatives sm submit a preliminary application to Eversource Electric Service Corporation in order to determine the current grid substation capacity for a two megawatt solar PV facility to be constructed on the town of Hadley land. You have two. Yeah, yeah you have select board's double. That, yeah, the take out town that select the, board that the Hadley select yeah. board. You have it side by side. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Click in. Yeah. Yeah. You have solar. Could right you now. call over? <laughs> no, I was going to get it, but I was yeah. so little. Um, yeah. Like I Michael, can you like sixty dollars? Explain minutes. again. Yeah. So, in order for the town to be able to utilize, this is how what I understand about the capacity. In order for the town to be able to utilize this energy, we need to have a system that can receive it, can accept it, can. It's a virtual construct. In many respects. Okay. Okay. The capacity of the grid is one thing, okay. and that is every source's ability to manage all this electricity and get it out to all the users all right, over the place right, before right. its wires overheat because there's too much electricity coming in or not enough. Right, so, right. so do they have it? That's a capacity okay. issue. Okay. The issue of where does this electricity get generate, generated, it all goes on the grid. It okay. won't go like it gets it's not, like it's not going to your house or to uh -huh. somebody's house or whatever. It's it's a it's a, vis a virtual construct in, in, in our minds. Okay. It's all going onto the grid and back out to everybody. Okay. It's being metered so the amount that get we produce at the facility gets metered and then it gets divided up by whatever formula we designate okay. it to go to the town Credit sewage to facility, yeah. the town library, the gotcha. town schools, gotcha. Gotcha. a low income off taker here and so right, on. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. If the town is able to reconstruct the DPW Okay, building. what is a sub, then what is the substation? That is the, the That's physical the thing that ever source Okay. We have to. We have That's to find like out. That's like those gotcha. I think it's in stuff, Sunderland, right? but I don't know. Oh. I think. I, I think. Oh. No, I don't think the one North Hamp in Northampton service, but we, okay. we didn't. We okay. weren't sure. Eversource has that information. Okay. So are those? A, is it where you see those transformers and stuff so. with a fence yeah. around? Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about the one? Um, not far from Bubba's Barbecue. That I think okay. so, but I'm not. I don't know. I haven't seen how it actually works. We're going to learn yeah. that soon. Yeah. So, so. Does anybody want to move um, that we do this for more discussion on it? What else do you have here? Well, you I just, have, this is just the background of, yeah. of, of this. Okay, so we resolved, you know, that we, we looked at it and that it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, this is the actual resolution and the cost, the application to fee and the cost of a third pyre to assist in the application is estimated to be under $1,000. This pre-application will determine whether there is currently capacity existing substation to accommodate the project. If there is not the capacity, Eversource will provide a time frame for when Eversource will make the necessary improvements to the substation in order to oh. accommodate the project. Okay. The rationale, the preliminary application process is necessary to determine whether and how to proceed with the project. It's non-binding, you know, we're not bound to build this thing if we, if we spend this little bit of money here and, and, and go forward with this first step. Um, all it does is tell us what the lay of the land is. Um, the preliminary application process does not in any way bind the town to proceed with this project. It will simply inform the town how and when it could proceed mm -hmm. should it decide to do so and provide costs for the substation upgrades that would be necessary. We have a, I can't remember, I think there's a four or five hundred thousand dollars in the budget to improve the substation, but that's just a wild guess. This would tell us what we In do. whose budget? In the budget for this okay. development project, right. yeah, everything, sure. everything it, gets paid. And I knew well, I had a copy, copy, but I also wanted to make sure well, it yeah, showed yeah. up on film. Okay. Yeah, can you remind me again? Did we figure out how much? What is 
estimated this will cost the town? Yeah, it's millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Okay, um, and I'm happy to um, go over I that. I mean, is very this something right that no, well. no, no? Is this something that the select board? I mean, will want to know at this meeting? Are they going to want like? We have a rough idea for them we right, right he's now. He's already presented that. Okay. Okay, okay. But, I'm, but I have not presented it to the select board and I'm happy to do that again. Um, this is... No, this oh, I is thought it. you did. No. Oh. No, we didn't. Okay. Um, so it's a two megawatt with batteries and that's how much electricity it actually puts out in a year. Um, and it's going to cost five point nine million dollars uh -huh. okay and the cash flow and assuming we can borrow at our bond rate which is two two point seven percent um and then assuming that this is the value of the electricity that that it produces and um these are some of the incentives that per per kilowatt or per watt that we would g gain because it's on a landfill because it's a public entity. Um, there's an incentive for the battery too, but that's fairly new and we, nobody really has a perfect handle on that yet. But that will offset the battery cost or a great deal of it. Um, and then there's rec values, which is a something that comes in. These are all the smart program incentives. They expire after 20 years. And so then after year 20, there's their re there's valuable renewable energy certificates, which are worth about a penny per kilowatt as well. Um, so the but don't we also get that 30%? Absolutely, absolutely. There's oh. a 30%, we'll get 1.798 million back within the first year from the federal mm -hmm. government. So 30% of about $5 million. Yes, yes, right. okay. And then these are all what the incentives add up to in a given year. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But, but after 30 but years, basically. But basically, every year, there's a, there's a, a net gain, and, and we're paying for, you know, getting, we're valuing the electricity at a certain rate. We're going to save that amount based on that rate. Then we're going to get these incentives from the SMART program. And this is the entire revenue that we would get from the SMART program. And then um, there are costs involved, annual costs, there's insurance costs, operating and maintenance set-asides, uh, replacement of the bat battery and inverter after a certain number of years. Yeah. Um, and so the net total is one point seven three million over the course of twenty five years. One hundred and seventy three million. What will make? No, no, one point You have it hundred and seventy three million. Okay. okay. So yeah, that's the net, okay. Is that possible? Wait a minute, that's not possible. That that's well these are well. You do have millions. I do. Yeah. Something happened here. I made. I. I got it. I. got to look at this again. I, I. changed it to a larger system and something. Upgrading from a one point five yeah, to a and two. And I. And I. And I. I, I screwed up something. And I'll find out what that is before we, we submit this again. So this is the amount of money we would make each year off of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Michael, you just so you job. expect tens of millions rather than hundreds of millions. Yeah. We're, the original thing would have netted a, a between 1.75 and $2 million okay. over the course of the life. Oh, okay. 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 And that's a couple decimal and, places. And so something yeah. is, I, I'm guessing that there's just a, yeah. there's a yeah. decimal yeah. Point, yeah. point that's missing. This is an amazing spreadsheet. Yes. So, so yeah. right. it actually will way pay for itself. It's absolutely yes. going to pay for itself. I mean, this is the size of a system that investors make investments in. And they make lots of money on them. That's why you have other systems around of this size. In this case, the town will be making that money. In this case, the town has access to 2.3 or 5 percent money, which these well, investors don't have. So it's going to be very profitable. So how they might not actually make money, but 
electrical costs go way. Well, they're going to make the, no. their costs are going to are are going to be zero, met, and okay. then there's going to be okay. Wow. So do you want? I mean, they're instead of paying for electricity, they're going to be paying interest on this bond that they have, which bought the system up front. Yeah. Right, right. And which is what's recommended right. when you buy solar. Right. And when, right. when is it paid? Like a when is it paid? Like a five years, ten years, twenty years? Um, like it like means like a, a um, paid for. Paid yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I can't so answer that question because I don't have because yeah. something's wrong up here. Right, 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 right. But generally, you know, most systems pay for themselves in seven or eight years. Right. I'm guessing that this would be a lot faster. Okay. Than because That's, yeah. so, do you want to fix this and also give this to them? When you yeah. No, I will fix that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. I mean, th that really drives it home. Like, yep. oh yeah, yeah this yeah. is a very good. Yeah. Thing the important. I I would feel like if you don't mind, the the first thing that we have to come say is. They, we are going to be sa they, this going, going to be saving after seven years is going you don't we don't have to pay anything so you know what I mean that's not exactly how it works okay. <laughs> okay. because we're borrowing money to right. do this yes and we're going to pay off that loan every year right for the term of them so our cost what we can say is this is what our cost is going to be. That's what this spreadsheet says. It's yeah. not that simple basically You're right. it's the cost of the loan, the cost of the insurance, the cost of the repairs, yeah. that's right. our electrical cost. That's going to be our new electrical cost. There will be no electrical cost. That cost is less than we're going to pay for electricity. Mm -hmm. yeah. The whole package, it's a wonderful investment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're. So, and, and I think people can kind yes. of understand. Yeah, I mean, so. Right. So. Um, I yeah. have a question. Um, so, Eversource is the only company that we have to be dealing with? Is that what we can do with other? For other companies, they they are the gr they own the grid out here. They own yeah. it here. When you hear about buying electricity from some other company yeah. because it's deregulated, you're 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 buying the electricity, which we're not interested in buying the any electricity. That you're There's two things on your bill. Mm -hmm. There's the distribution cost Correct. and the electricity. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Okay. And so when you buy electricity from somebody from Texas or somebody yes. who has windmills, you're buying the electricity. You're not paying for the distribution costs, and you still have those distribution costs of on course. your bill. And so the, our distributor here is Eversource. Okay. They're in charge of, and they are and king of all these lines yeah. around okay. here. Well, all mm -hmm. around here. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. And that is a real consideration for anybody who's thinking about getting solar for their houses. You really have to meet all of Eversource's expectations and everything else. You go through them. Uh, is there a motion to proceed with this? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Okay, There's a motion so to proceed with this. Okay. I, I move it. I have a motion. <laughs> I second. Okay. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The Kathy, other are you the voting? Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> the other issue that is related to this that I, I wanted to address as a committee is that I don't know if anybody you read the New York Times today, but there is a looming crisis with our en with our grid nationally, and and our efforts to bring solar and wind online, and that's because all of a sudden it, for ten years our electrical use was flat, okay, because people were conserving, people were installing solar or whatever. Well, very recently, a huge data processing facilities mm -hmm. come, have come online. The Inflation Reduction As Act has caused huge battery companies and lots of manufacturing, which is all what we want in our economy, to come to the U.S. And so electrical demand is all of a sudden spiking, yeah. and, and it's going to be spiking for a while. And unfortunately, the grid is not set up for it yet, and what they what the utilities want to do is bring back more coal and more mm -hmm. gas to feed th that demand. Okay, and the problem is that it takes about a year to bring a data processing facility online. It takes about a year to build a battery and all these things that consume energy take about a year. It takes five or ten years to site. A solar or a wind array really because there are so many people that are fighting them yeah. okay and because there are all these archaic regulations in place that are designed to protect the environment okay to slow down development 
so that you can get in there and get, I mean, I used to fight, my wife was the, the leading fighter of in trash incinerators in the state 25 years ago, used all these techniques. I helped her. They, they were important techniques to try to stop environmentally problematic things from happening in our community, big developments, whatever else. But all those regs that are in place right now and all those, you know, it's a death by a thousand knife wounds, basically, that we were able to inflict as environmentalists on stopping things, they're still in place. And people are using those to stop solar now because they don't want to look at it because they think it's ugly, or windmills because they don't want to look at them because they think they're ugly, or they're going to change their property values. And so it's not just a problem in Massachusetts. It is a real problem nationally, everywhere. Maybe are getting in the way of building the solar and when we need. The one exception to it is Texas, where these big Texans have decided we're gonna we're gonna create a, a, a fast-paced regulatory system. If you want to build a windmill mm -hmm. or a solar farm, you go ahead and do it. It's all right with us. <laughs> okay, and so, so that's what the pendulum swings. So yeah. that's what's yeah. happened in Texas, and Texas is the only state in the union now that is up to speed with lots of renewable energy to feed into all this increased growth. They must have done some work on their grid too. Well, they that was the precipitating incident. Right. Mm -hmm. They were they were in desperate need of upgrades because it was just awful with the weakness of their grid. Yeah. I will say yeah. that just today Senator Joe Comerford actually sent out a notice about trying to move some of these processes mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. at greater speed because she said it was three years just on the paperwork right. and, and there's right. an immediate crisis. Right. And Governor Healy and her energy czar, what's the Melissa name? Hoffer? Yeah. They have proposed a similar mm -hmm. ruling, and I don't understand, I haven't read it. Well, it's to, to, to simplify to text, the to Texas to, to, so. to set, simplify the process. And I think that as a committee, we ought to support that in the abstract. Mm -hmm. And when they turn around and say, this is going to take two or three years mm -hmm. to get this substation going, we mobilize and say, you, this is your town. You're mm -hmm. sitting here on Route yeah. Nine. You got to make this happen faster, yeah. and we are, and we ought to, as a committee, mm -hmm. be ready for that politically to, to, to do that as well. I think, that, yeah, yeah. I think for us to, um, I looked into this a while back. Like if if we as a committee want to sign a petition or as a group support something, I'm pretty sure we have to get permission from the select board. We would have to. Uh, um, if anybody's on Joe Comerford's mailing list or check the website, that it, it really goes hand in hand. Yeah. She sponsored the bill oh, yeah. that eliminated the by right installation of solar in Massachusetts, and I don't know if it's passed yet. So I'm glad she's backpedaling a little bit. I love Joe. Okay, yeah. she's a dear friend of mine, but. You know, she, she, there's a lot of environmentalists that are afraid to give up this local control that we've yeah. always had. Yeah. Well, it's also the gas companies and stuff are big, have a lot to do with it also. Well, they're pushing, pushing gas as, yeah. as the replacement. Like, we don't have time. Anymore. Right. So anyway. Well, thanks again for all the work you've done on this. Yeah. And thanks also for the call to action looking ahead. Yeah. Excellent. Solar shouldn't be as hard as it is. No. Had a lot of wind lately. A lot of electricity. Yeah. 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 Okay. So where are we? Okay. So we voted. Yes, we want you to present this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. And that's the So somehow we already got on their agenda. I was at in Jennifer's office and I saw it on the board. Go oh, Jane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jane wasn't able to join us today. It probably would be wise to do a follow-up and just make sure we're truly okay, so on I'll, the I'll agenda. Check with her. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Is that a virtual meeting or in person? It, it's both. I think you should go. Oh, I, I mean, we'll yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's Actually, the thing about that like, is, is the deadline is tomorrow. We have, like, if we have to say something against 
um, giving power to. Um, is that the one from Joe? Uh, this is the, yeah. I, I received this is the from I don't know Community Land Water uh, Coalition. Judy Eisman. Let me see who sent it. <laughs> yeah, but it, tomorrow is the last day that we can we can say. Oh, um, their public comment. Yeah, that, yeah. that's but from right. the other side, right there. Yeah. That's an environmental group that's right. That's pushing to not right. to not allow that. <laughs> Push me, pull me. Mm. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's okay. So we agreed, and and you're gonna give them this. Yeah. Okay, um, will you send me the documents and all? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think. Oh, the, the graph and stuff? Yeah, I will. Are you ready for 4.3? Yep. So we have had a positive response on the cleanup day, and it's my recollection that this is our fourth cleanup day for the town. Uh, when we were just starting this committee, we thought about what's something we can do close to home to make a difference, large or small, and this came up and it's wonderful to see how it's grown. For, um, I got approval from the police department, the fire department, the DPW has been notified. Tandem Bagel, yet again, they're coming through as a sponsor. They'll give us three dozen bagels. This year we're shifting from Home Depot to the parking lot next to Hopkins. Mm -hmm. This year, for the second year, we have a number of students involved in the Key Club and um, National Honor Society who will be back and will be helping us. So this is... What's the day there? So this is um, April 20th, and we'll really focus on the morning. Also, I want to say that um, the company that runs our transfer station um, has been very generous in saying people who are involved with this can just come in and... Um, dump whatever they find. Mm -hmm. So recycled bottles go into the recycling container and all of that. So one place that I saw the, the bike path is full of garbage. It's like shocking. Well garbage. when it comes to the bike path, the bike, bike path, path is actually owned and maintained by Department of DCR. Yeah. I think. So we will not probably be doing much with the bike path mm. because that really falls to them. Which part of the path? Yeah, because I was on it today and I didn't see it. I, saw it really uh, I, I walk uh, uh, where the bridge is, um, walking from the bridge to the part that goes, the, the dam that goes to the river. There was like a plastic and all in the, in the mm. right. It's like, but this is shocking. Oh. Yeah, on the bike path or on the, on the top of the dike that goes to the river? Uh, no, uh, no, no, not on top of the bike, uh, bike bike, but uh, at the side of the bike path. Mm -hmm. So in the in the grass, like yeah. where the, the trees are and, and people everything just is throw their stuff. Yeah. Oh. So is a way like we can ask them to clean up that? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's part of their mission. They they're yeah. responsible for that. So will we tell them. Like well, I think they're you know it's call them up. It's March fourteenth. I'm not sure if they're really up to speed and have yeah. staff in place and. Especially right now, it start to grow, grow the green, uh -huh. so then it's like it's hard to go and find all the like the garbage. Yeah. All the, yeah. Well, I'm glad you raised that point because we have tried the cleanup day early. We have tried the cleanup day later, mm -hmm. and we've run into problems because sometimes we're dealing with ticks, sometimes yeah. we're dealing with poison ivy, and other things. But when it was too early, it was too cold. One year we got snowed out, so it's been hard to find a balance, but. Targeting a date right near Earth Day, mm -hmm. um, and this is the closest Saturday to Earth Day, is actually pretty good and we'll give it a try. Mm -hmm. It's warm enough that a lot of people will do it. And generally when we put this out, and I'll ask Scott Merz back from the Gazette again to publicize it, um, a lot of people will just say, I'm going to do in front of my house, or I'm going to do my street. So we don't have this grand map where we're trying to cover every inch of Hadley we cover what we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Usually people that show up have like they've already decided where they want to do it. Um but we're meeting in the parking lot next to the Hopkins Academy. At eight AM. Eight AM. Yeah. Okay. Eight to twelve. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. And the um, transfer stations open a couple of hours extra, but by the time people get the trash in. Um, last year, my wife and I, we cleaned up by um, the UMass horse farm. We did the long stretch of North Maple. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also did um, beyond the stadium, beyond the stone circle, if you know mm -hmm. where that is, we're mm -hmm. heading to Pleasant Trees and that area. And it was uh, amazing. 20th of April. Uh, you know, we had tin bags of um, plastic wow. bottles just from around wow. the stadium mm. because people had evidently a good place to drink. Yeah, yeah. lots of nips, I bet. Well, it wasn't just nips, it was, we probably still have some, like the yeah, like the, the half liter vodka bottles. bottles and everything else. It was just amazing Pines hundreds. Yeah. So again, we do what we can with mm -hmm. that. And you know, part of this initiative too is every spring, um, Susan Duncan has been good with her seventh graders of painting more signs and just spreading the word. But I know on Mount Warner, it doesn't always have a great effect because we clean up with some regularity and there's mm -hmm. always more. Mm -hmm. the, uh, in, in my country, they did a campaign, they said like, uh, it's not more clean because we clean, it's more clean if you don't, you don't right. get it dirty. Yeah. So, yeah. That would be nice. Let me see if I can get that that poster and ask, like maybe we can. It was in Spanish, so like if we can translate it or something like that, Sounds and we can good. create that poster. Yeah. So like, uh, it's not. It's not well, remember, there used to be commercials on TV, like Smokey the Bear, Don't Start a Forest Fire, but Don't Be a Litter Bug. Remember that? It was yes. a big campaign. Exxon paid for some of those. And there was an Indian crying. Right. Exxon paid for that. But one. he was actually Italian. <laughs> <laughs> and, <he was> actually <laughs> <Italian. Yeah. laughs> and the whole reason was to kind of get us to think about litter instead of climate change. Um, geez. And that was a deliberate strategy on their part. <laughs> now, um, as a scientist no, and a science cold. teacher, um, you know, I always like to look at the numbers and things and we talk about what is the waste and I am stunned at how many um, kind of things you buy from Cumberland Farms. Y you know, your plastic cup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a one use. One use. Uh, um, and Single use plastic Single use, is yeah. the worst. You know, the drive through lane kind of thing. The quick meals, the fast food wrappers mm -hmm. and all of that. It, it is really interesting with how that goes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, plastic's a huge problem. Yeah. Anyway, so we're on for cleanup day. Do you want to... Um, 4.4 is reporting on our meeting in green communities. Sure, just so you know and everybody here knows, um, Kathy and I have been pushing the green communities grant. Um, I'm a little surprised at how much we have to push it forward. Mm -hmm. But where we stand now is originally they were investigating some air conditioning and upgrades at the town hall but we've really shifted gears now they're really looking at winterizing Hadley Elementary School and getting it into much better shape. Do we want to propose that they take a thousand of it and fund this pre-application process? We can't. Can't, can't yeah. use green communities grant money for solar. It's only mm -hmm. energy efficiency Great. upgrades. Okay, good. So the focus now is on weatherization and insulation for the elementary Great. school. And so we, we had a meeting that kind of super clarified who's going to do what, who's going to get the estimates, and then we'll, they'll tell us about it, and then we'll go to the select board and say, can we spend this, you know, grant money to do this, and hopefully some of the work will start to be done. So our grant is just under $140,000, and some of that also <coughs> needs to go to uh, grant management. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, yeah, 125000 or something that can be spent on this. So we hope it happens. We have the money. There have been some green communities that haven't spent their designation <coughs> fees, which is really sad. Um, but I most do. spent on weatherizing the school, and then it will make us more money. Well, and that's right. the agreement. Right. Like, I mean, we just have to 
I think our meeting was really helpful and yes. hopefully we'll hear something back soon. Yeah. Um, <sighs> they, some of this money would go to pay someone from the town of Hadley to manage it? So we are working in conjunction with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission uh -huh. and there's one person there um, at a very fair rate who, who is sort of watching the budget making sure everything is okay. Her name is Mamie Kaplan. Yes. Okay. And she's the one that wrote up our yeah. energy reduction plan. And so she's going to get some of the money to help oversee. A little bit. A little bit. Yep. Yep. Got it. Okay. So let's see. New topic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There's um, a lot there. Is this you look at all of these? This what you yeah. So probably the thing to do is well, if you can go you can to go to the agenda. Yeah. These are all, all these websites are lit up, and then you can just click on it. I think I sent it out uh, last yeah. Tuesday, Which so was March what? Yeah. You might need to keep going back a little bit more. March agenda. Here we go. Thank you. Okay, is this oh, it right here? It. No, so that isn't it. That's Jack's thing. We have anything to add? Oh, I saw an HCC agenda. Oh, about oh, there. No, that was just today. There it is. Whoop, oh, March agenda. Yeah, there it is. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, and if uh, we can go through, we don't have to look at every single site, but just to get a sense of what uh, Amherst is doing to spread the word. Right here? Mm-hmm. Well, to spread the word or for well, us to Well, to consider. inform the people. Who? who? Here. Um, it, just some of their sites for informing the people and what's happening. Uh, yeah, but there's a lot. I mean, what's behind those websites is their climate action plan, for one thing, yeah. which is hundreds of pages long. I mean, they got people to help them with these websites. Right, right. Stuff. But it just showing what they have out there for easier access. Right. Yeah. Do you need to go? I, I have to just... Yeah. Mark, can I call you back in about 45 minutes? So this is their... Yeah, end of April. End of April. Yeah. Um, yes. Committee. Okay, okay thank you. Website. It's just interesting, you know, as we look for future targets and places that we want to spend their time, seeing some of the recommendations, and they're really covering lots of different issues. They have nine people on the panel, although they have one current vacancy. What about if people on their own of us? Like before our next meeting, go to these and spend a little sure. time, because like their um, what's it called? Their sustainability dashboard. That's their newest mm -hmm. web page, and it has. Is that their sustaining Amherst one? No. No. Okay. Sustaining Amherst. Is, is it the old. last one? The last. Um, Oh, sustainability dashboard. There it is. Yeah, the sustaining Amherst is back from like 2021. Um, it, it, anybody want to direct me? To yeah, it's the if bottom you go back link. To the agenda. The bottom link on the, the one just before 5.2. The one that says sustainability yep, there dashboard. But there's a lot to like each one of these things. You click on 
and then there's a whole bunch of information there. I mean, and all of this is sort of a prettier way and kind of summarizes what is in their very lengthy climate action plan, which they hired somebody to. Well, and how interesting, look at that. 50% of the town's electricity is provided by solar farm. The town land. government, that's a fairly yeah. small system. That's the one on their landfill. Yeah. Uh, when the, they don't mean, I think they mean the municipal. Mun municipal, right. And this took almost a decade yeah. to get done because a few neighbors <coughs> wanted to continue walking their dog there or something. Mm. Where is it? Is it in Amherst it's, Woods? it's in the Amherst landfill. Right. But, okay. but the old Behind landfill. Amherst Woods. Remember, yeah. first it was yeah. going to yeah. be on the transfer station mm -hmm. side, and then, anyway. Oh, is that right? I yeah. really missed that detail. Because yeah. there was something they wrong. They sued them, yeah. and they sued them, and they yeah. lost, and then. Well, part of the reason for me asking, and sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, no. but, you know, just to. This is some interesting statistics and in putting out the numbers. I wonder how much of Hadley's land is permanently protected. Well, see, that's what I'm trying to say is if, like, I've spent a lot of time reading their information, and what came before doing this website is, okay, so the second link here is their climate action adaptation and resilience plan, which they hired consultants, kind of like what the school committee did in order to yeah. do the study of geothermal. Well, Amherst spent, I don't know, like a ton of money, and Northampton's done the same yeah. thing. In order to have a comprehensive climate action plan, you need consultants to come in and help you evaluate everything going on in the town. And then, if you read, I mean, it's a lot. To, you, you, probably will definitely not want to read this whole thing. 173 pages. That's why yeah. I think they came up with this dashboard, because it kind of condenses mm -hmm. all of the information in their climate action plan. But that's, um, I mean, that's what towns are doing, you know? It's part of, like, how you get from point A to B, C, D, is you need a plan. So anyway. Right. Well, we've been aware of that. It's just we don't have the capability to do some. Right. Oh no, it, it yeah. wouldn't. Like their climate change, they But they've agreed to hire someone who. Well, they worked with their town council, and it was all like the same. So what's coming, you know, down the pike, or however you want to say it, the um, that meeting that Jane recommended. See, I, I haven't gone to it yet, I don't think. It's a webinar that um, Massachusetts Municipal Association mm -hmm. is addressing this, how towns need a climate action and resilience plan. And so uh, there's gonna be, they're gonna be talking about ways that the state is supporting small towns like us to do that. To become a green community 2.0, we need a climate action plan yeah. for the whole town, which is not something this committee is capable of doing. We would recommend to the to the select board that consultants be hired to come up with to do that for us. Yeah, and you know, just want to also emphasize that Amherst has a full-time sustainability person. That's their job. Northampton has a full-time sustainability person. Mm -hmm. That's their job. Mm -hmm. Hadley doesn't have mm -hmm. anybody no, in but, their capacity. But it's, right. it's, you know, it's becoming pretty clear, like, in supportive ways, the state, I get emails from, you know, the, what do you call it, Department of Energy and all yep. that stuff about, you know, s even small towns need to start working on a climate action plan. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, but there's support for it. So I'm going to attend this webinar that yeah. I guess Jane rec sent us the email. I forget when that is, but I'll go to that. <laughs> but um, yeah, Amherst has, they're, uh, they're easily 10 years ahead of us. I mean, they've just started working on this stuff yeah. quite a while ago. They're bigger ago. towns, you know, they have, more, they have right. a lot more resources. Right. They have five they times our size. Right. right. So it's sort of like, it's a good model to look at yeah. mm -hmm. for 
well, this is what we need to do. And you can, and I, a while back, maybe about a year ago, I got, I got into this. And I went to a bunch of different towns, Deerfield, Sunderland, Northampton, Amherst, Hatfield, all the towns around here to see who had climate action plans and who didn't. And most of them do. Like mm -hmm. we're, but we're getting there. Yeah. You know, we all, they've also became a green community like some of them 10, 15 years ago. So and part of the reason for raising this is it could be a topic for an upcoming meeting where we are looking at so what's next with some of the paperwork and plans? Um, <coughs> has the town thought about bringing on like a part-time? Yes. Resiliency? The, well, they're talking about a sustainability planning director who would That'd be one of their many. Well, the main thing they would do is write for grants, like the MVP grants or... Um, right, but in order to do that, we need to have that no, we don't need that first. No. No. But we Not do to need apply to something like that. We do. Well, we do for long range planning. But um, I mean, you can get grants to help mm -hmm. hire somebody. Gotcha. Gotcha. But there has to be somebody t to do the work of that. And that yes. office is pretty maxed out right now. I mean, yeah. Carolyn said to us, like, we really need a planning director to help with this stuff because there's just kind of nobody to do it. Um, well, and, you know, one advantage we have is being able to hire the quality people like Mimi Kaplan, whose job is planning, right, you know. Right, right, right. And there might be ways that this can help us if, if we end up going this route. Well, that's why I encourage everybody instead of kind of like guessing how we might be able to do it if you if you spend some time at these links mm -hmm. and, and especially the um, just, well I mean if you want to dig into this be my guest um, I mean you can at least scan it and see in the beginning who they hired to help them develop this thing and then all the the different topics that it covers like there's watershed and you know all these different things and Northampton has a really great one also but it gives you some idea of you know what what Hadley needs to do right. and the, the main thing is we, we're gonna have to hire somebody to help us mm -hmm. but I think there's going to be more and more support for that and there is uh, there are grants that we can get to help pay for for the consultants. These models have value and they can really help us sort of jumpstart what we're trying to do. Right. It doesn't have to be a 173 page document. It can be much closer to their sustainability mm -hmm. dashboard, things like that. No, well, but the sustainability dashboard was taken from this information. Yeah. It did, it. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be that small either. It can be something in between. Well, right. I mean, yeah. yeah yeah because the green communities was a lot of work to finally get that pulled together right but we wouldn't be the ones to do this yeah so we would hire consultants to do it I mean, we're just not capable right at all of doing it. it's way beyond the capabilities of six part-time volunteers I, I, I want to kind of look at all this stuff because I'm, I'm skeptical of that just because you hire all these consultants and you create this great big awareness and plan that you don't actually affect anything. Oh, you exactly. Don't actually, you don't I mean, actually, that's part of you it. You don't actually <coughs> get something built. Right. The only good right. thing right. about in, insulated and right. doing it now is that green communities, they're calling it, it, it would become what's called a climate leader community. And people refer to it as Green Communities 2.0 part of qualifying to become one of those is the t town has to have a climate action. Yeah, once, you, once you become a 2.0, what does that do for you? You're eligible for a lot more grant money. So uh, yeah. it, this is something that for I think we should, I would love it if everybody would dig into this a little bit so you get what I'm talking about here. It's not 
it's not like applying to become a green community. It's a whole other thing. It's a deep dive into, into what needs to happen in Hadley. <coughs> and, then, and then it gives us a plan. Like Northampton, they have, they have this, and they are follow, they're following the plan. I mean, they have sustainability people there. So what are they well, doing? What well, are I they don't know what they're yeah, doing that's lately. That's what I want to know. No, right, but I mean, I've followed yeah. them for a while. But. See, the advantage is, like with green communities, the fact that Kathy and I are pushing and the schools are very receptive. Uh, you know, Hadley Elementary will get winterized. That's the hope. So, right. Yeah. We have that from the green communities point one we have all these recommendations that we ought to be just hammering well that's what we're and that's, that's why we asked yeah. for the meeting we are hammering yeah. uh, how right. has it been a year since saying, we i think that's that's the value well that's, that that's, that's where we are and so it's good to look at all this but uh, we're just not quite right. there yet you know let's we've got something on our plate right now we have two things actually let's do our green our energy reduction plan we've got some money and as soon as we use that money up and have gotten some things accomplished we can apply for more grant money to do more of the work that's been recommended i mean that you know you guys all have a copy of our energy reduction plan and especially the more detailed <coughs> one that uh what's his name from energy source came up with i mean there's some serious stuff that needs to happen at all these different buildings that will make them so much more energy efficient and save the town a ton of money, it's way reduce our, I mean, it's supposed to reduce our greenhouse gases by 20%. We've agreed to do that, so let's do it. This, I think, you know, definitely have a look at it. And, and you'll start to think, okay, that's a long range, like maybe once we're so far into our energy reduction plan we can start thinking yeah. about something like this that that's my feeling about it is that and also the landfill like there's steps you know just getting that just to get some stuff done yeah absolutely is, absolutely you know what does jane say town government moves slowly so uh, we've got some stuff on our plate now I mean, I think all of this is very valuable, and I encourage everybody to really dig in and read about okay. it. But um, I don't yeah. think we're ready okay. to Fine. try to do that right now. This I don't think they would do it right now. <laughs> so anyway, do you want to do you nope. want to dig nope. into nope. it here? Nope. Okay. This was good and. I think we're ready for 5.2. Okay, so the re Recycling Dividends Program grant, we got a lot more money, well the town, not us, but um, so the town's grant award this time was $4,550, which is more than twice as much as we've gotten in the previous years. So, 4000 Four thousand five hundred and fifty. Is that because of all the bottles and cans that Jack and his wife picked up? Or no? <laughs> no. How'd that work? No, it's every year I apply. It's the Recycling Dividends Grant Program, or Program Grant, how do you say? And um, it's the Department of Indo uh, the Mass DEP puts this thing on. Basically, it's they ask all these questions about our trash and recycling. Do we have this? Are we doing that? And for everything in the questions that they ask, you get points for various things. And, um, and then they add it up. And, and if you're over 10 points, then it, if you're 10 points or under, you get 275 per point. Once you get over 10 points, they upped it to 375. So this and then what can you do with this money? Um, a bunch of things, actually. Um, I didn't bring the. Uh, if you're interested, I'll send the approved spending list. A lot of it has to do with trash and recycling, but there are. Jennifer pointed out to me. I, I went to her just to see, like, do we want to spend this on, you know, re the town's budget, it, you know, would it save the town money if we use 
this money to buy like recycled paper and stuff that they use and she's like that ah, let's not do that she goes you know you can get benches and stuff and i'm like what and she goes yeah click on this because she had looked at this like years ago before they had me anyway so um and then i had thought it would be a great thing for the town to have this paper shredding event so and carolyn heard me say that she came out and just jumped on and said you know, who have you talked to? And I said, Pro Shred. And I said, somebody named Kevin. And she said, Kevin Dorsey. And I said, yeah. And she goes, I changed his diapers. Yeah. And, said, <laughs> and see, they li his family lives right across the street from her. So she said, because uh, I had already talked to them. And he's booked all this summer, this uh, spring and, uh, and summer, fall are all booked. And they're going into 2025. So I was like, all right, forget that. We'll do something else with this money. And she's like, no, 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 I'll call him. I'll, I'll work this out. So she did. He agreed. So we're going to, and she pushed it through. I mean, I'm supposed to go to the select board with this, but she was like, yeah, I'll take care of it. And um, so we're having a paper shredding event on the 30th. It's a Saturday from 10 to the noon. 30th or no, is March 20th? I think next, this, this one. No, 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 the 30th. Okay. Really? Oh, I oh, thought yeah. this was this Saturday. No, 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 no. Oh, no. I won't be able to do it. No, it's definitely March 30th. Because oh. he usually doesn't start till April 1st, and he's mm -hmm. all booked. It looks like it's open to anyone. Yes. Yes. It's free. Okay. Five box limit. Do they have to show that they're a town citizen or no? Not? Okay. Anybody wow. can come. This is right here, isn't it? Yep. We're going to do it in the parking right lot, here. the select board parking lot. They can pull their truck right up against the side of the building. So anyway, that's going to cost... Five hundred dollars an hour for a mobile paper sh paper shredder. Wow. Oh yeah, the amount. So yeah. Did so the a thousand of that money is going to go towards that, and then Scott McCarthy happened to come in while I was there, and he was saying, "Well, we could really use permanent trash cans at uh, Zaturka Park, and also the, I guess there's an area. Here's the public safety building. Here's the parking lot." And then there's an area here where I guess people congregate when the kids are playing. For the baseball games. Yeah. And um, so I'm looking into that. And they're pretty, I mean, the kind we're talking about is would be on a concrete pad. And it's like a metal cage that the trash can. Industrial can't. scale. Yeah, yeah, with a roof on it and stuff. And it looks like they're about $1,300 a piece. Wow. So, but what a cool, you know, if we need them, then there's the money so we'll see what happens with that and thanks for doing all the um the, the work. application yeah, yeah. Can so that money be used to pay for a pre-application on the solar no okay. <laughs> 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 i don't i don't know all the angles yeah no. it's not that much money i doubt it's like what you doing that uh, yeah just be nice to have perfect pay. so then items and I anticipated the time of posting Kathy sure. attend Barstow's Farmer's Roundtable, so she's going to tell us. Yeah, about I'll that. just tell you a little about what was shared. Um, it was quite well attended. Yeah. Barstow's area was full of um, dairy farmers from Western Mass, and we had representatives from the American Farmland Trust, UMass Extension, Department of Agriculture, Farm Bureau, Bureau and NRCS were there. Um, and basically they set it up where um, there were two rounds where whoever wanted to speak got to speak in turn and the first round was farmers, the dairy farmers expressing their areas of concern and then the second round was potential solutions mm -hmm. that in ways that mm -hmm. they were trying to help themselves. It was very positive. It, it was just, a, I learned so much. Um, so again if any dairy farmers are listening please forgive me if i get something wrong um, so some of their areas of concern um, were that they're working on adaptations to uh, the crazy periods of drought yeah. or excess water and flooding that we've been having um, stating that it's becoming difficult for them to predict their feed crop production for the year um, so it makes things a little tenuous. 
uh, they're noticing that hay is lacking nutrients due to the prolonged periods of rain or periods of very heavy rain and that's in relation to the manure because their manure pits are filling with water so when they spread mm -hmm. the manure they're spreading more water than they're spreading nutrients the ratio is off mm -hmm. and then the heavy rains come again if they top dress the f their fields then it all runs off so some of the solutions they're looking at are um, injecting manure directly into the soil so the nutrients like a denser drying it out somehow or something um, so like they just said injecting it's, it's you're squirting it yeah in, you, you have a, a di something that cuts the dirt open you squirt it in there and then yeah. it gets covered up so it's yeah. not on the surface yeah so, yeah, so, so it doesn't run off <coughs> yeah um, and then um, our winter weather with our little to lack of frost is affecting their um, management plans regarding the way they till the soil what they're finding is over time the soil is becoming more compact due to the lack of movement from the frost what mother nature oh, used to it's do so it's, not it's not happening yeah so so they're having to deal deal with that um, the lack of the natural freeze thaw cycle uh, they're noticing that windows for harvest and planting are getting shorter. Uh, feed corn is experiencing a fungus that kills the leaves later in the season and the plant dries. Mm -hmm. So the plant itself is dry, but the corn isn't at the correct moisture level for mm -hmm. harvest. So that's making harvest of the corn mm -hmm. a little trickier for them. Mm -hmm. um, they also noticed that the huge wildfires we've had in the recent recent past is that the, the feed, the proportion of nutrients to ash in some cases around the country, it was 20% ash. So mm. by pound, what they're feeding the animals Oof. is not nutrients. Oh, so, so these are like, I was just amazed by all the ways this is affecting everywhere, insidious, like it's insidious. <laughs> How many people were you say at this event? 50? I wouldn't say 50. 25? Okay. 25, 30 maybe? Oh, all right. I didn't count. Yeah. Um, obviously more evaporation from the soil because of the warm weather. Um, There's some farmers from Western Mass who have concerns the way the smaller dams are being op operated. Um, I didn't talk to these people, so I don't have a lot of detail on this, but with the management of the water level there, the farmer's feeling it's not necessarily coordinated with potential storms that are coming. So the companies may be releasing the water at ill times. And, right. and so their land is getting flooded mm -hmm. and they're a little concerned I wonder how we could find out the answer because I know this, this has come up as an issue it's for years. Come up oh, over okay. And over yeah. again. It has more to do with generating right. electricity yeah. than uh, their priority versus yeah. Yeah. Like like people control. downstream. There's yeah. only so much control you can have when you get nine inches of rain. Right. Correct. That's yeah. the other thing. Yeah. yeah. Correct. You want to blame somebody. <laughs> well, remember when that when that yeah. guy was here, we asked about that that consultant. Right. And we made a big deal out of the mm -hmm. dams and he was but like, nah. Yeah, because it's just hitting every bit of surface area. I mean, it's when that, it's that raining. Much right. water. Right. Yeah. Everywhere. Right. Yeah. Right. What do you do? It's going to go yeah. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they talked about the mycotoxins and the clostridium if I'm pronouncing that <coughs> correctly. So there's concern about these organisms growing in the soil and when it's too wet, um, I think on the hay crops, these bacteria start to grow. If the, the dairy cows consume it, they can become very, very ill. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, oh, and of course, stress on animals. So because the animals are hot and stressed, they require a different feed that's something more easily digestible so they keep up milk production. So those are all the areas of concerns that were brought up. Wow. And these are this was the go-round for the solutions. Um, 
suggesting that farmers stay really on top of their soil sampling with the soil tests, invest in crop insurance, and I guess there's such a thing as hurricane insurance that they talked about. So if there's four inches of rain or more, even in an abutting county, and your crops are damaged, I think you can apply and get mm -hmm. some assistance. Um, because of the lack of the freeze-thaw, farmers who adapted the no-till may actually have to plow under every few years mm -hmm. to loosen the soil up again. Um, they talked about double cropping. Not, not quite sure exactly. I was doing my best. Um, is that like planting two oh, things? Two, two, two together, like two maybe? Two rotations, so throughout a season, two times planting. So oh, okay, it wasn't like yeah. corn and, and like an undercrop? Oh, you're thinking of companion mm. plants? Oh, maybe. They use the word double cropping, so I'm not sure what they But I think of double cropping as more you grow lettuce early in the year and, and then, then you plant <coughs> pumpkins. Right. That's right. a second term. They're okay. probably talking oh. about putting clover or something inside the corn. That's because what I was kind of wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, from the dairy point of view. Um, <laughs> and then, this amazed me. Again, I have no experience with dairy other than living in Hadley and seeing, you know. You're doing a great job. Oh, yeah. You're doing a great job. You're <laughs> yeah. very thorough. Um, yeah, tiling and irrigation. So some of the dairy farmers are really investing a lot of money in their land. So this thing called tiling is where they actually put like a drainage pipe in the mm -hmm. ground which will allow excess water to <coughs> drain away so it, it keeps the hay fields, I guess the roots at a proper distance so not too short so drought won't affect them and then it moves the water away so nutrients kind of stay better in the soil I think mm -hmm. and then along with that because of periods of drought they're running irrigation too so if it's too wet they have the tiling and if it's too dry they have irrigation, so it'll turn the water on if there they have go. a water source, and then, but what an infrastructure yeah. investment that is. Is, is that's there state incredible. money for any of this? Like, that's what I was wondering about. Is there, it is the state supporting farmers? I think the state is trying, but if yeah. you weren't aware, um, the governor put in an application to FEMA, the national um, support system yeah. for emergency management, and it was denied. So last oh summer, gosh. with all the, the rain mm -hmm. and all that, <coughs> they really can't collect. So it's my understanding that she's resubmitting that, saying, come on. No. Yeah, because wow. that was like... It wasn't um, as big an event as some of these other floods in other parts of the country, and I'm guessing. Well, that's true, but it, it still didn't. was an event. I mean, crops But anyway, were lost. in answer yeah. to well, your question about whether there's funding, yes, oh. there is funding for irrigation. Yes, there is funding okay. for the drain and stuff. Okay. Um, for like Good. adapting <laughs> to climate yeah. change. I mean, just to give you some perspective, and I'm, I'm not that old, and when I started farming 25 or 30 years ago, people thought I was crazy to buy irrigation for my vegetables at that time. That was mm -hmm. just like you didn't don't need it in this Hadley soil because it just has moisture yeah. coming up and it's crazy. And then now everybody's got irrigation for veg. Unheard of for dairy farmers to need it because yeah. corn is like bulletproof. Yeah. And hayland is like there's no soil exposed, so you don't have evaporation, but times uh, change. Yeah. 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 But yeah. now the problem is also the flooding and when that stuff gets wet then you get that fungus and stuff mm -hmm. growing. Yeah. Ugh. But that's such a cool kind of invention yeah. to sort of drain the water off, right? It's cool, but at the same yeah, time, man, yeah. It doesn't always work, and you have yeah. to be situated in a place where you actually have a lower area that, or you have a great that the water yeah, can right. go to. Yeah. If, you know, if you're not in the right spot, it doesn't work. Yeah. Right. What are some other things? Um, okay. Oh, investing in one-pass equipment. That went over my head, but I just wrote it down. Um, let's see. I'm not quite sure that what that would probably mean. probably <coughs> something that prepares the soil. Plants it all at the same time. It does yeah. it all at once. Basically. Yeah. And probably um, has to do with no-till. Yeah. Paying attention to your land management practices in segregating the farm fields based on soil type and moisture so you can purchase different policies smartly for different land. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. the, the level of management 
these business people, that's what they are, business people have to do, you know, to keep on top of this is this, quite amazing. This is also the reason you see folks like Simple Gifts, just they can't find a new buyer. So they're, closing they might be shop. closing up shop. Yeah. Well, they are closing yeah. up for yeah. now. I mean, they'll open, if somebody buys it, then it'll start up again, but the farm <coughs> store and everything. And Nick's yeah, Barn Over is, is taking a year off as far as we can tell. Mm -hmm. Wow. Next barn over, which is a oh, CSA, really? yeah, they they're letting their land go fallow for the year. They're they not having a CSA. Because of flooding and stuff. No, I think no, they're just, just tired. They're just tired and exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. But the 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 the, um, the other farm simple gifts. simple gifts that has a lot to do with the very very complicated equity limitations that they placed on that land to try to guarantee that it would be affordable forever and which is a noble and thing <coughs> that we all want to do but it's so complicated that nobody wants to buy it or touch it's it. It's also oh, not right. very good land. And it's terrible land. Because we, oh, really? we grew on it for a number of years. I know you did. You, yes. had, you had one good year of squash yeah. and that was the year before <laughs> they bought it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all right. And just, just quickly to, to finish this up here. Um, crop rotation and they were talking about corn the corn feed or feed corn excuse me once the, the temperature hits 90 degrees I think the corn slows down or mm -hmm. its growth is altered in some way so the corn doesn't like the hotter temperatures that we've been having so they're thinking of growing sorghum instead to supplement um, the feed rotational grazing um, and then working in cooperation with vegetable farmers to rotate fields. Uh, if there's any drainage ditches on your land, keep them clean um, and change your business model to full year retail in some way and obviously use, utilize the longer growing seasons that we have. <coughs> but overall, <coughs> really That's positive, meeting. great meeting. Mm -hmm. I learned to Like tons. Barstow's with their retail yeah. shop? Yeah. Or, well, oh, their... Yeah. Um, Organic composter or whatever they call it. Yeah. And some of the farmers Bio were talking digester. about fire digester. Yeah. Yeah. Timber also. This is that's thing. amazing. Yeah. And it I'm glad it was meeting. I'm glad it was a good day and I hope that in mm -hmm. two weeks yeah. that the farmers round table will be equally good. Yeah. Um, is there a way you can send those? Can you send to that to Marion? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Good. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Do you want Everybody this copy or would you rather No, electronic? because I'm going to put it in. I'm okay. going to attach it on the minutes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Great notes, so. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Oh. Hopefully, yes. I got it mostly right. <laughs> Is there a way I could take that copy? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so if you send it as a PDF, that's the best way. Wow. All right. Okay. It's I tend easy. to work in Word. So yeah, well, you can, can send I can it. Sure. Yeah, going to be around to take notes on Wally's meeting. I plan to go to Wally's <laughs> meeting if, if <laughs> all yes, goes well. Happy you're great at taking notes. Oh great, yeah, you are really. Good. <laughs> I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. As long as people send me their documents, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. A question about that: if if I send you this revision, how is it going to get to the select board eventually? You're going to give it to them. Just that, present not beforehand. It. Um. What do you think? It's better if you can send it ahead of time, if you can figure out what's causing some of the catches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So how should he send it? So should he send it to Jane and she'll distribute it or send it to... I would actually <coughs> send it directly to Carolyn and Jennifer James. Oh, right. And Jennifer will distribute and, it. And what they might do is put it on the attachments for the crew, for uh, the whole select board. Okay. Um, they often need things as soon as they can get them, so, you know, it's already the 14th. Yeah. Okay. No public comment today. No. This is like the old days when we used to meet in the living room. I was just saying, I had said that earlier. I remember those golden days. Yeah. Well, all right. Okay. So, um, thank you so much, Kathy. So, who wants to take notes next time? <coughs> that. Are you sure? Yeah. Thank right. you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then next time, because we're doing the back and forth rotation, uh, we can talk about any last minute things we need to do for spring cleanup day. 
um, possibly diving into some of the um, Amherst documentation and hopefully we'll hear more about solar. So those are some other things, but please, if you all have other ideas that you feel should be spotlighted, yeah, just send them. Yeah, send, us send an them. Email. Okay. So as soon as you have your final copy <coughs> of yeah. that thing, you send it to me, and yeah. and then I'll send it to Marion. Yep. Good. And send well, me. Do you need to adjourn? Yeah. All oh, right. You know what? My, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. And adjourn. It, well, movement. I move to adjourn this meeting. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.